Bella here from Self Publishing School, and in this video, I'm going to go through how you can use the app Notion in order to write a book, as well as how you can get some free templates we've created for fiction and nonfiction authors. Stay till the end of this video, and I'll teach you how to grab those. Now, first thing is first, before we go into the tutorial, which I'm about to do, like this video and subscribe to our channel if you're a writer, if you're looking to learn the most up to date information on how to write, market, and self publish a book. Subscribe, and we'll get right into it. Now, first thing first to know about Notion is that it's not only a writing software. It has different kinds of functionalities, including task management, charts, calendars, in addition to just a place where you can keep notes. Now, this makes it very, very versatile. It's very flexible in how you can use it, and ultimately, you can figure out how to use it best to meet your needs as a writer. And I'm gonna go ahead and go right into the tutorial of how I use it to write books, plot, and outline, and teach you how to do that, as well as give you access to some of those templates right now. This is what the Notion app looks like when you open it. I have it on my desktop app right now. You can also use it in a web browser and that'll give you different features. So as you can see right here, I kind of have a book plan template for Notion for fiction and nonfiction. Uh, if you stay to the end of the video, I will teach you how to get access to these. But to start, I'm gonna just create a new page and show you how you can go about creating something like this for yourself and the different features available for writers when it comes to Notion. Because like I said, Notion is not just a writing app. It's really a notes app, task management, in addition to a number of different things, calendar, tracking, that sort of thing. So if I were to create a new page, this is what it would look like, and I would title it Book Planner, just for this example, and click Enter. Um, I can open the page fully like this. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's kind of centered this way instead of being full screen. If I were to create a planner, I personally like to create it full screen. So I'm gonna go up to these three little dots, and anytime you see these three little dots on any element, that will be the options for that element. So I'm gonna go down into full width, and you can see the different elements and the different options here. You can change the font, you can make it small text, you can lock it, all sorts of things like that. So this is the book planner. Now, if you can see that it's prompting me to type a backslash backslash for commands, so I'm going to go ahead and see what options there are. So a lot of the basic blocks have to do with writing that you'll use probably when drafting, bullet points, you can actually have a table here. So this could be a good character tracking system as well. Um, if you want to see all of your characters just basic at a glance, um, that can give you those options and you can kind of drag here to create different levels. Um, add, those sorts of things. Again, this is going to show you the options for that table. Um, and yeah, you can just type in different elements there. Another option, if you go down further, so past the inline, to the database. The database is going to be where there are the advanced, advanced functionalities for Notion. So things like you saw before where it comes to the board view, which I use to outline, or your gallery database, this can be for character uh, profile creation, that sort of thing, calendars, so anytime you see the word inline, that's going to mean that it will populate on this page itself. If you see the full page, it will create a link that goes to a page that houses that element and only that element. So keep that in mind as well. So if I were to create the outline view like I showed you in our templates um, and how to edit those, you're going to go to the board database inline. And this is personally how I like to, to keep track of that stuff. So let's say this is book one and I'm creating the outline. I'm gonna change this to chapter one. I'm actually gonna hide this. So no status is really just where you have empty cards. You can keep that um, if you have seen ideas that you wanna do, uh, that's helpful too. Or you can click here, again, the options for this element and hide it so it's just not there. Um, and so we can do chapter two, chapter two, chapter, chapter three, and so on. And if you want to add another chapter, you just click this, this addition here, type in the name of it, and it will create that as well. And so you can keep going until you have a lot, and it will allow you to scroll sideways. You can see the scroll bar pop up there. It'll allow you to scroll sideways and back over here. So this little card right here is what you can use to create topics or scenes for your chapters. And within this little card, I just click to open it, you have the options to create what are called properties. Properties can help you keep track of different things or allow you to visualize key pieces of information. So if I want, if I, this is a fiction book and I want to know what location or setting, let's call it a setting, this is in, 
You can change this to multi-select, which allows you to have multiple uh, locations visible. But since a setting is usually in one place, I'm going to do a select and I'm going to type some options. So let's say there's a garden, there's a palace, there, oops, I keep forgetting that enter is how, what it creates. I keep tabbing over. <laughs> um, garden, enter, or let's say palace. And again, you can just click create. Um, so this one's going to be take place in the garden. And you can see right here that this has populated there. So at a glance, I can see that this takes place in the garden. If I want another piece of information like um, edited, so is this piece, is this section edited, I can also create a select of yes or no or started just to have the progress. And so if this is edited, I want to see that yes, it's edited. As you can see, this doesn't populate the way that the garden did. And that's because of the settings of which properties are visible. Now you'll want to go edit the board. So again, these three dots are the edit options for this element of the board. I'm going to click here and go down to properties. This is going to allow me to toggle um, which of these I want visible. So I want to see if it's edited. Is that visible? And I can see yes. So at a glance, this can help you plan. It can help you outline. It can help you keep track of that type of different information. Now let me show you another element here that we can use a list database. So this can be a list of pages. This can be drafts. So if I were to create, this would be draft one. If I want to draft directly in here and you can open this as a page is what it will look like um, and type this in here. That's one way to use the drafts in general. I personally like just having the drafts uh, as their own pages. Um, and so you can actually highlight this when you're typing and change this to a page. Click in and this will give you more of the actual typing database in our templates. This is how I do it. But again, this is just options for how you can organize these different things. Um, and so that's another element that you can use to create. Another element would be, you saw the character board, um, which is usually, which is actually a gallery. So the gallery is gonna allow the images to show up and show you bigger blocks. This here, I'm gonna delete, delete this example. And uh, all, the only way that you, the easiest way to add an image is to just click and drag it from your computer. And so that's what I'm doing, grabbing an image from my desktop and adding it here, and it will um, populate there. So this is another place where you can add character features. So age, and I'm gonna create this a text just so I can type in the age. Um, add another property can be eye color, and we're going to say brown. And then I'm going to, well, let's change the name to character. And then I'm going to update which properties are visible. So again, you're gonna to go to this menu, go down to properties and select age and eye color as some visible. Those are kind of the, just whatever you seem to need to remember most when it comes to uh, writing about your characters, you'll want visible for an easy view. Another thing that you can do is create a calendar. So another hack, you can just um, back, backslash and start typing and it'll pull up the, the names of those. So I'm gonna create a calendar in my book plan and I'm going to set a task here or a new element that says write 1500 words. And I'm gonna create a property or change this one that says um, completed, question mark, and I'm gonna do a select tool that will allow me to say yes, or no. And so that will be here. And again, to make that property visible, I'm going to go to this options, properties, and I'm going to select completed. Um, toggle that so I can see that no, I did not meet my word count at this goal. So this is just a very brief overview of how to use Notion for writing your writing your draft in order to see the word count. So I know a lot of people care about that. Go to this options and it'll be visible at the bottom down here. It's not always on screen. Maybe you like that. Maybe you don't. That is just how Notion is. So again, I will give you instructions for how to find these templates. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of Notion and I hope you love it as much as we do. Again, super customizable piece of software that allows you to take control of your book 
planning, and writing. As you can see, Notion is really valuable for a number of different reasons. I personally use it not for writing books, but for a lot of other things. I prefer Novelpad, which we have a tutorial and review that I will link here for that as well. But ultimately, Notion is great for those looking for a simple processor and something extremely customizable where you can make it fit your personal needs. Some cons when it comes to Notion ultimately comes down to some of the spell check capabilities aren't that great in that it doesn't automatically capitalize I's. It is a little funky and unreliable when it comes to spelling as well. Now, if you do this, you can also pair Notion with a software like Pro Writing Aid, where you can copy and paste your writing into Pro Writing Aid in order to do the editing and the grammar check or you can use Notion in a browser window where you're able to use Grammarly on it to kind of solve that little hiccup that they have there. Notion is great if you're just looking for something simple, if you're somebody who's willing to put in some time to learn how it functions and the different options to completely tailor how you use it to write books, and you can create templates in order to do that as well. Speaking of templates, we have some templates for you. Now, if you click the links down below, you can go ahead and download your fiction or nonfiction Notion template and that will be delivered to you via email. Now, if you are still looking for a writing software and you're not quite sure that Notion is for you, we have a writing software assessment that we recommend six different types of writing software that we've tried, we love, and we have approved for what you need as a unique writer, whether that is plotting and outlining, whether that's something super simple, whether you need collaboration features. This assessment is gonna ask you some questions that will help identify what you actually need that's gonna benefit you, as well as how you can get started with that software. So I will link that here for you to take the assessment. It's super fast, it's not even two minutes probably, and that can help get you on your way. Otherwise, we hope this was super helpful for teaching you how to use Notion to write books and how you can use it for your books going forward. Best of luck. On your writing journey and I will see you next time.